What's up, my friend? Welcome back to another video. And today we're taking a quick look at Space Age Rhythm by Authentic Soundware. And so I was really excited to cover this one when I saw it on VI Control and I reached out to Authentic Soundware and Jared very kindly sent me a copy to do a review of for you guys. So I really appreciate it, Jared. Thank you so much. And uh, without further ado, let me just kind of jump in. And this library really speaks to me because it kind of uh, resides in that jazz, big band, Space Age pop lounge. Um, sort of area where it's kind of underrepresented in the land of sampling. And, you know, there are some jazz big band libraries out there, but less that are kind of focused on this style specifically, the space age pop sort of uh, music. And so this is kind of the follow-up library to the initial space age pop library, which was more of a construction kit library. So it was more wave files, maybe some loops as well, but not really a contact instrument. So this was a really welcome addition to the Space Age series. And so um, I'll show you Space Age Pop a little bit as well. Jared has very kindly sent that one over too. But um, on the website, you can see that this is the Space Age library, but with the rhythm section. And so we can go down here and kind of see what it's all about. And he has a very, uh, very, very comprehensive walkthrough video, by the way. It's like a four, 42 minute uh, video, I believe. And it covers a lot of ground going over every single instrument and all the details, which is super cool. So it includes bossa guitar. It has drums with sticks and, uh, and uh, what is it? Mallets and stuff, which really cool. Um, an organ, percussion ensemble, hollow body electric guitar, upright bass, and a lap steel guitar as well. And then it has a really vintage mic setup as well. Um, they tell you all the different uh, mic techniques and stuff like that. Here's a couple of screenshots from the library. I love the GUI, by the way. Very open, very colorful, but simple at the same time, which is something I really do appreciate in a lot of um, GUIs, as you might know. And here's the related product. Here's Space Age Pop, which was the original library. Again, these are more construction kits. So basically, construction kits are... Uh, when you have all the different stems or multi-tracks from a recording and you have them all split out. So when you bring them all into your session, you can recreate that track um, from start to finish really quickly. But if you want to just use individual loops and sounds from those stems and those multi-tracks, you can certainly do that as well. And hence why they're called construction kits, because you can literally reconstruct the song or the track from scratch using those loops and those, um, those tracks. So anyway, without further ado, let me kind of just dive in here. And by the way, you can also get that both of these libraries, Space Age Pop and Space Age Rhythm as a bundle. Here you can see discounted at 119 at the, at the moment, okay? So uh, let's kind of dive in. So we have the library here and it is not a contact player library. Um, it is found in the files tab. And so you want to do a batch resave and then you can load in the instruments. So in the instruments folder, we have these eight different uh, patches. We have bass. Uh, upright bass, which is the jazz bass with a plucked pizzicato. We have bossa guitar, the drums with the sticks, and then drums with brushes and mallets, hollow body guitar, lap steel, organ, percussion ensemble. And then finally, we have a studio orchestra shorts patch as well to round things off. Actually, one of my favorite patches. Anyway, here's the first patch. We have the bass and we have sustain or staccato. So let me just play this a bit for you and then we'll go over our thoughts. So here we go. All right, so I switched mics there in the middle. I, I personally prefer the U47 over the 44, but um, in general, you can see it's a very simple instrument. So you have the sustains, which basically hold for as long as you want. And then there's the staccato articulation, but both of them feature a legato function where when you press um, you know, a, a note after the first note, it's going to cut off the previous note so you don't get any overlapping notes, which I personally really like. Um, we don't have to worry about you know polyphonic stuff happening because it, this is intended for more of a walking bass sort of function anyway, which makes a lot of sense. So that's the upright bass. If we move on to the bossa guitar, this is actually the most complicated instrument in the whole library in terms of the scripting and stuff. So let's really quickly go over this. 
Um, at the very bottom, we have the chord types, which we can select from. So we have major six, we have major seven, minor, uh, minor, minor six, minor seven. Uh, maybe I'll play some as well here while we do this. So we have major six, major seven, there's the minor, minor six, minor seven, major, uh, minor, major seven, minor seven, flat five, diminished seven, uh, dominant seven, flat nine, flat nine, oh, sorry, add nine, right? And then flat nine, and then C7 sharp five. And basically you notice that these voicings are all rootless, by the way. And that's because it's intended for us to play the bass notes independently or individually on the bottom here in this blue key range. So we have, right? We have those bass notes that are basically one shots of those, but then we have the chords that have been pre-recorded above which is kind of nice. So I can play bass note in my left hand and then the chord in my right hand, and then we can get both. Right, and so I can play bass notes here in my left hand and then in my right hand, I basically play the strums. And so speaking of strumming, we have those three red keys right here, which is a short chord. Oh, sorry, it starts on A. So short chord, short strum, medium strum, held a bit longer, and then we had the long strum. And that's basically from the longs, long chords here. So we have short chords, medium chords, and long chords. So short, medium, which is in the pink, and then an octave higher, we get the longs, right? So in this, in these upper three key registers, we have different roots. So these are all major six, but depending on what note I play, that note is the root of that chord type. So F major six, F sharp major six, or F or G flat major six, G major six, right? So it's intended for me to play the bass note on the bottom as well, just like that. And then of course, it's the same thing an octave above, but just medium length and then long length at the very top, which also includes the root, by the way, on the bottom. So you don't need to play the bass note in the left hand if you don't want to, because you can hear that root note in there as well. And then octave above that, we have the root selection for those dedicated strum keys, which we just talked about here um, in the red key range. So you can play your different roots on the top. Let's say I want a chord to start on F, and then I want to play those strum keys, and it's going to play an F major six. If I want it to start on A, I play the upper A right here, and then I strum and that's going to play an A major six, right? So that those are a couple ways you can activate different chords. You can choose the root simply by using the yellow, red, and purple key ranges here, or you can choose it from the upper blue key range from the root select portion, which affects the strumming keys right here uh, below these upper three registers, right? So that's a really interesting way to script it. And I think it, it makes a lot of sense actually. At first glance, it looks a little complicated, but it makes sense after you uh, play around with it a little bit. Now, the one more, uh, the other thing we wanna talk about <clears throat> is this, I forgot exactly what Jira called it in his walkthrough, but it's, it's basically a chord pattern uh, engine, which basically works as the upper blocks here being the root. So you can select from C all the way to B, of course. And then the bottom selects the chord type, right? So the ones we just talked about, major sixth all the way down to dominant seven sharp five. And so when you have, uh, you know, for example, C is the root and major seven below it, it's gonna be a C major seven. And then you can create these different um, chord roots and their different chord qualities as well. Now, the way this works in terms of cycling through them is that we have these orange keys right here at the bottom. So we have C and we have C sharp. C basically causes the engine to go to the next chord in the sequence. Whereas if you press C sharp, just above it, a semitone above, it resets it back to the very beginning. So I could play, I could strum, for example, here, and I'm pressing key or the C, uh, C1 at the very bottom, which moves the chord to the next one in the sequence, right? But if I press C sharp, it goes back to C because that's the first one in the sequence. So one thing you can do is, for example, let, let's let's try to play this in, in sequence. I'm gonna use the strum keys here that we just talked about, these three red ones. And then I'm going to cycle through these chords using uh, this, this key switch right here, C1, to go through the different chords. And then at the very end, we will land on this A major sixth with this long chord. Uh, key right there. And I'm also going to try to add the roots below in my left hand as well. So uh, let's see if we can do this without screwing up horribly. Here we go. All 
right? So let's do that one more time. So basically I'm using my pinky and my left hand to cycle through the different chords. I'm using my thumb basically to play the different uh, root bass notes, right? For those rootless voicings. And then my right hand is just playing those strum keys um, in the middle C register there. So let's do this one more time. Starting from the beginning, press the C sharp key on the bottom, C sharp one. Here we go. One, two, three, four. That was a little bit better, but you can see how you can create your own chord progressions in real time. So you have the strums in the right hand and you have the bass notes independently in the left hand. And that's a lot of fun actually. So yeah, just a couple ways you can use this patch. Um, and of course you can tweak the mix for or the balances of these two elements independently, the chord volume and the bass volume, which is nice. Uh, you can bypass it if you want to try different patterns. It won't change anything when you experiment with new patterns, initialize, resets everything back to the beginning. You can transpose the pattern. So you have a lot of flexibility here and then it re repeats back to the beginning. I just love that, this little graphic overall, really cool stuff. Okay, with that out of the way, let's move on to these other patches a little bit quicker. Here we have the drums with sticks. <laughs> All right, always nice to have the little mod wheel controllable roll there. And then let's hear the same drum kit, but with uh, brushes and mallets. Cool, we got a loop there. Now in terms of the loops, I don't believe this library comes with very many loops at all. I think we just heard that one, but uh, I I think here, yeah, here in percussion singles, we also have loops uh, for the maracas and the tambourine. So that's kind of cool. But uh, other than that, we don't get really any dedicated drum loops. Uh, you can find that in other authentic soundboard products, but not in this library. So you can create your own patterns from scratch, which obviously gives you the most flexibility. But if you want those dedicated loops, then you'll have to look elsewhere. Then we have the hollow body guitar, lots of uh, standard articulations here. Let's just have a listen, so. Okay, so before we move on to the staccato and the other articulations, let's touch on this pitch bend range really quickly. So you get zero all the way to 12. The higher the number is, the more semitones uh, will be available for you to pitch bend, right? From the middle of the pitch wheel all the way down. So for example, if I choose one, it's gonna bend one semitone down, so. So that's really cool. Let's go to seven. Right, that's a cool little feature that you don't get in a lot of libraries. Um, I believe the mod wheel controls the vibrato, so. Yeah, so you can add your own uh, vibrato in there and you can program it exactly how you like. If you want more of that Hawaiian feel, Caribbean feel, you might want some more of that vibrato in there. Uh, yeah, and let's keep moving on. Then we have staccato.
Okay, so here we have chords long and chords full. So obviously the long ones are being played in different chord qualities there. Major, minor, or sorry, major, let's see, major, major six, nine, minor, dominant seventh, dominant seventh sharp five. And then we can set the pitch bend range as usual as well. Uh, I think those mainly apply for the long chords. Let me, let me try here. So and we have the pitch bend range set to five. Let's see. Okay, let's hear the legato mode a little bit. So legato mode one seems like they sample the legato up to the major third, I believe it is. And then after that, it restarts with the brand new attack on the note. Legato mode two, let's have a listen. Right, so for legato mode two, you can hear there's more of a transition, a played obvious transition between those two notes. And of course I can influence the speed of legato transition, but if you want more of that effect, you can get that in there with legato mode two, whereas legato mode one is a lot uh, smoother. You don't get that attack on the second note, but it is that nice glide without any of that, you know, glissando sort of effect going to the next note. So that's kind of cool too. All right, lap steel is very similar in terms of the functionality. Let's just have a listen to these chords. Okay, there we go. So for the lap steel, we get major sixth and we get major minor uh, basic chord types there. Uh, instant like Hawaii here, right? <laughs> like SpongeBob and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, it's just really classic. I really love this patch. It's so unique. A lot of this library reminds me of Swing in a way from Project Sam, but this library really leads into that Space Age sound even more, that Hawaiian sort of feel to it. Okay, well, then we have the organ. So. All right, so for this organ, we have a few different options, right? We have the different registrations. So you get full, which I think is a combination of these different, uh, you know, part, parts of the organ. And then you can separate them out into A plus B, just A, just B, or C and D as well. And then we have the different amps and the tones as well. So DI, Brit, Leslie, and then Rotate has that rotary speed, which you can influence through fast and slow there too. <clears throat> Very cool. And then you have drive and air uh, parameters if you want to alter the tone a little bit too. 
Cool stuff. All right, let's hear the percussion ensemble really quickly here. So lots of instruments, but um, they're all categorized. So let's just take a look actually. So we have the conga here in the blue, uh, in the orange. We have timbale underneath that. Then above we have another timbale. Um, and then in the red here in the middle we have bongos. Then we have cha cha, bongo again, woodblock, clave, maracas, euro, and triangle. So let's have a listen. All right, and then in addition to just those basic sounds, you can also pan them, which is kind of cool. So let's see, here's the congas. Pan it left, pan it right. You can increase the volume. So you can basically tweak the, the volume balance of those different elements together. If you wanna just use this one patch, that's super cool. Um, let's see, maybe we can, let's see. Let's just hear the RM mic here and then maybe the C2. Right, so that's a close two, close one. And then the room obviously gives you more of that sound in the hall. Nice, okay. And then the last patch we have here before some of the individual percussion singles. Actually, let me hear the, let's do the percussion singles really quick. So here's the bells on their own. Here's the conga by itself down in the bottom. Tambourine. And the triangle we already heard. Let's hear one of these loop patches as well. So uh, let's hear the tambourine loops. Let's see what we get. Yeah, so I believe it's tempo sync. So if I sped up the tempo, I believe it would be even, like it would sound way better too. Uh, right now I'm at 88, but if I was like at 120, then uh, I'm sure it would sound uh, like, it would have way more rhythm for sure. Okay, but like I said, my favorite patch, one of my favorite patches definitely is the Studio Orchestra Shorts. Um, it, this sounds so good, so. <laughs> Right, so it's like a combination of pizzicato and woodwind shorts, kind of like up an octave. Yeah, really, really nice stuff. And it's all recorded through that uh, that vintage gear too. So it really has that authentic old age sort of sound, which I really enjoy. So all in all, I really love this library. I think it like fills in that niche really beautifully of, you know, there, again, there's a lot of jazz and big band libraries out there, but not a lot of them tackle this st uh, style, this sound specifically. And they've, uh, in my opinion, they've stayed really faithful to the genre, uh, all the way down to the recording process, the gear they use, the articulations, the instruments they chose, all of that stuff really uh, lends itself to this style of music in a beautiful way. And this is just the rhythm section, right? Um, used in combination with the Space Age Pop Library, which again is uh, is is a straight up like construction kit library. So uh, this is one of the songs, for example, Halley's Comet. They give you a lead sheet, which is really uh, useful if you don't want to figure out the chords on your own. You know, you can take a look at bar twenty one. What chord is being played there? Oh, it's an A flat seven, and they're they're playing these notes, right? And they also give you uh, a mix of the full song and one without any drums, which is cool. Then you have dry and wet samples or loops. And those are the same loops are basically, but without reverb for the dry ones. 
but um, I've opened up a few of these loops here. So for example, here's the dry drums. This one just has the one sample there, but let's also listen to, see the second loop here has this drum loop here. Very cool. Loop number three. Right, let's listen to maybe the flutes here. So I think it's at the end. Right? So this one definitely has more um, of that sound to it because this is literally the, the full recorded performance. This is not samples. This is the full recording, but it's just the flutes multi-track or stem. Let's see what the flutes for. Right? And then let's hear a guitar one. Maybe track three. And then organ. Some of these have a lot of silence at the beginning. Right. So basically, if you take... Oops, sorry. If you take all these different uh, loops and then drag them into your session, you can basically hear the entire song from scratch. So uh, here is the entire thing with all the... Right. I think I chose the example from another one, but uh, in terms of these these actual uh, little loops here, but yeah, so you get you have the flexibility there. But I personally love contact instruments. I just love the ability to basically play my own uh, you know notes in with a contact instrument. And the GUI again, like I said, is really appealing to me. The color scheme is really friendly. It has that old vintage vibe to it, especially with the wallpaper, the way he kind of designed um, this this graphic. It's really really cool. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of functionality within each patch, but it doesn't look overwhelming at all. Like this one is just mic positions with some panning controls. This one, the most complicated uh, patch with the Bossa guitar, it's still relatively easy to understand because it's well labeled and you can see that everything is spaced out properly, right? Everything has its own place. And I really enjoy that. So I've always said that simple is always better. And this library has that balance of simplicity and complexity in a really great way, in my opinion. Um, you just have the sound itself, which is the most important thing. That's super authentic. It sounds very rustic and very authentic. Um, I just love it. I think uh, overall, um, if if we expanded this to playable strings, winds, brass, like I could just imagine the full orchestra being recorded in this way and being a full contact instrument, that would just complete this entire you know space age orchestra, and that would be so so cool. Because yeah, the rhythm section has been sampled so well. And now I'm just like, well, how about the rest of the orchestra? And of course we have the construction kits, but I would love to see that in a contact format. I've, I've, I've already been talking to Jared about it. So, uh, you know, hopefully that's something in the works in the future, but um, yeah, I would just love playable strings and, you know, even just strings and woodwinds in this sort of style. It would be so, so cool. Like hearing that vintage um, string vibrato, you know, those performance and then with, you know, program legato, um, all that stuff, true, true legato transitions. That would be so, so fun. Anyway, I'm starting to ramble. That is a quick look at this library. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I would highly recommend it. Yeah, again, if you're looking for something in this style, definitely check it out. If you want to list up my full recommendation list of, you know, jazz libraries, but also ethnic libraries, piano libraries, like all the orchestral stuff, strings, winds, brass, percussion, I've condense it all into my sample library buyer's guide and it's totally free. I would love to give it to you. And uh, yeah, you can just click it, um, get it by using the first link in the description box below. And it's again, totally free. I've also included the prices and how you can use each library, why I recommend them. And so you can really treat it as sort of a buyer's guide if you're interested in my thoughts on a particular library and you're maybe not sure if it's worth it for you, um, you, you might be able to see it there in that guide. So again, you can grab it totally free as a thank you for checking out this video today. Thanks again to Authentic Soundware for sharing a copy with me. I really appreciate it. Excited to see what you come up with more in the future. And uh, I'm, I'm sure we're all excited to hear. So I'll see you in the next video. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.